also have with you, some of you all may be her constituents um, in District 3, you know, we're going right beside each other. So, um, want to get started. We have to be out of here probably by 7.50 at the latest, because the library is actually closed. So, if we need to have a party outside of the building at 8 o'clock, we can do that as well. Um, I want to turn it over to Gordon Burkett. Um, he will be uh, sharing information and updates on uh, the sanitation program. I'm also Brandon. Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Ease. I'm the um, new chief of staff for District 2. So if you have any questions or concerns, definitely reach out to me. I can make sure it has some young kids. And y'all, I am Brandon from next door, and he has been helping me. Uh, so we are getting everything back and forth. So uh, we have police here. So if anybody really want to show off, y'all know where. I don't want them to ask what you out. So uh, please, please, please be nice to each other and respect one another. Uh, is happening, so I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'll sit in the back if y'all have questions to ask Mary. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, my name is Gordon Burkett, I'm the Solid Ways Coordinator for the City of South Fulton. Uh, I'm excited to be here this evening, I appreciate your time. So my presentation is going to be fairly short, and then we're going to reserve most of the time for you all to ask any questions that you have at this point, okay? Uh, with me this, after this evening, actually, Gigi Gardner, the way to everybody, she works in the solid waste group as well. So, um, this is as big as I've ever seen this presentation, so I'll take a little bit to get used to. But uh, I'm really excited about this whole program. I want you to think about this not just about residential garbage collection, but it's actually a lot more than that. This is really a comprehensive approach to dealing with um, litter in the city of South Fulton. Uh, I've, I've worked in the city of South Fulton, I think almost what, three years now at least, and the number one conversation that we've had since I've been here is all about the living, okay, the look and feel of our neighborhoods, and why are they not clean? That's the next question that comes out of that conversation. So this program uh, is a representation of that. Uh, it represents us listening to you uh, and your concerns. Uh, and then us coming with the elected officials and coming up with a, an approach that is comprehensive to address a lot of concerns, not just uh, what happens one day a week at your home. Okay? But also I want to get, I wanted to bring this out today to make sure that you see what you'll be receiving very soon. All right, this is the first real opportunity for the city to do some comprehensive branding. Uh, one of the things that we also hear is a lot of people don't necessarily know if they live in the city of South Fulton or not, okay? Our borders are a little interesting, depending on where you are. So, on that day of service in your neighborhood, everybody who's in the city of South Fulton will have one of these cans in front of their house. So people will know. That's why we've got the, the nice new logo on the front here, okay? Okay. Next slide. 
Um, what we found out through this process and uh, the associated survey, where over 600 people participated, was that people really wanted weekly trash service. They really want street sweeping on a regular basis. Um, they wanted a comprehensive litter program. And when things didn't go right or when they needed help, they wanted one phone number to call or one place to go that would resolve that issue for them. Um, and then a uniform data collection. That was the key input as well. All right, so from that, these became our goals, to reduce litter through containerization, big container here, uh, solid waste service at every home. As I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, it's not necessarily clear that everybody in the neighborhood has garbage service. It is required by the city of South Fulton, but that does not mean that everybody has it. So the question is what happens with that material at that home? Amazon is still stopping at that house, okay? Uh, where does that box go? Where does it go? Does it go down the street? Does it go in somebody else's container? Uh, sometimes it's all of the above. Um, no, go back. <coughs> okay. All right, so that leads into reducing illegal dumping issues. And anything that ends up in in the street, in the curbs, in the gutters, it ends up in our water system, in our stormwater system. And as we know, Chattahoochee River is the largest source of water in the state of Georgia that contaminates that water. As part of being a good steward of our environment, it's important for us to divert as much material from our water as possible. Uh, and then consistent pricing, that was something that we heard a whole lot about as well. In the same neighborhood, even the same vendor, you could have a $10 or $15 a month difference in price for the exact same service. Okay, next slide please. All right, so what's included in our waste program? Weekly residential solid waste. Uh, monthly or quarterly street sweeping. So we've got 100 roads, basically any road that's outside the subdivision that's got a curb or gutter, uh, we'll be street sweeping now. That actually started in December. How many of you have seen the street sweepers? None of you? No, I You've seen them? Okay. I got one in here. One person's seen them, but they're out there every day. We're also, we're also uh, improving, we're doubling the amount of mowing that we're doing on a regular basis as well. So uh, last year, up until last year, we mow about 200 miles of road once a month, and that includes litter collection on those roads. Uh, in this new program, we're going to twice a month, 400 miles, and we're mowing and picking up litter. Okay. Um, twice per week servicing for city receptacles. Um, the city owns 32 receptacles that are out there. A lot of them are on uh, Bulk Hall, if you're familiar with that area. Um, and this is the first time we've had regularly scheduled maintenance of this. <coughs> That's included in this program as well. All right. Also, last but not least, educational programming is included as well. How to be a good steward, environmentally responsible behaviors are also included in this, particularly as it relates to recycling. All right, our program start date is June 1st. That's a Thursday, so we'll, we'll start service on that date. Uh, and that will be for household garbage weekly and monthly bulky waste. Optional services through Waste Pro uh, will be, you can get an additional container, uh, yard debris, and other options that you'll contract directly through them. The price? will be $19.43 per month, okay, uh, or $233 a year per household. All right, we're currently working with the tax commissioner and negotiating uh, for them to collect the uh, 
the invoicing for is basically to do the invoicing for us. Uh, it will not be on your property tax bill. It will be completely separate. It will be on a separate invoice. But because the tax commissioner already has everybody's information, it's a very simple approach for them to do this for us and the most cost effective. Um, one of the major questions that we got from will be how will this pickups be addressed? Um, there will be one phone number. Uh, there's a QR code on top of this garbage container. Uh, you'll be able to scan that with your phone. Uh, it will give you access to our website. It will give you access to uh, phone number and call center for Waste Pro. And in the beginning of this process, because we know we're going to get a number of calls in the beginning, uh, we're setting it up so the city will also have a call center set up. So if for whatever reason you're not able to get Waste Pro, you'll be able to contact one of our people and talk to an operator. So if you don't receive your can, or for whatever reason your service didn't happen that day, you can call in and let us know, and then we'll make sure that we get to you. Um, <clears throat> also, as part of this process, one of the bigger challenges that we've had with previous vendors is accountability. Okay, This is the first time that we we'll really have teeth in the process. So when you call that number, if your service doesn't happen that day, once you call this number, the clock starts ticking. The vendor has 48 hours to fix whatever's missing. So if they missed your house, okay, or if uh, some of that garbage juice gets out of your street, okay, and you call it in, the time clock starts right then. If they don't fix it within 48 hours, they get fined $25 per home that's affected. Uh, for the first 10 homes. After the first 10 homes, it's $50 per month. Okay? So that's the first time that we'll be able to do that as well. Next slide. All right, our project timeline is pretty straightforward. Um, this is our series, uh, this is our second series of community meetings. And uh, we've already done eight meetings, so we've got four more to do. Um, we've got we're completing our agreement with the tax commissioner as we speak here. I was just working on that. Uh, we're also in April. We're going to send a postcard to every household in the city of South Fulton detailing how the service will operate going forward. That will include the holidays. So just so you know, uh, this service will work on all but four days out of the regular calendar year. Those are January 1st, Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving and July 4th, okay? And when there is a holiday, so if a holiday is in the middle of the week, say on a Wednesday, if your day of, of service is on that Wednesday, you'll get pushed back. So you'll be that Thursday. And then we'll finish up on Saturday of that week, okay? Uh, community meeting series three. So the next set of meetings, and actually we're gonna do one large meeting, it will really be about how to use the service. What is your day of service? Um, how do you use it? Where do you put the cart? What can go inside the cart? Uh, what additional services, if you'd like them, that you have available to you? Uh, and those kind of basic things. What happens if you need some additional service? How do you get in contact with us? Um, let's see, post non-curbside, okay, so the, we're gonna post our non-curbside collection application so that's people that we traditionally call the backdoor service. That application will be available in April as well. Uh, in May, we are going to be doing our countdown to new service and a series of social media uh, moments. So each, uh, several times a week, we'll be providing information through social measures to make sure that we're informing folks like yourself of what's going on and what's going to happen next. Uh, we'll also start distributing carts uh, May 22nd, okay, May 22nd, we'll start sending out these to every home, so we're doing 40,000, um, and then June 1st, the service starts, next slide, so that's it, so with that, I'll start taking questions, yes ma'am. Thank you. 
I break down my boxes, lay them next to the can, they pick them up and not a problem. Yes. Those gentlemen will get out, do whatever they need to do, or I can use my own can sometimes that is a little overflow so the street won't look dirty. They'll go ahead and dump it and keep it moving. Yes. Will we have that kind of flexibility and customer service from this new company? Uh, everything that you put out will have to be within this container. Okay. Uh, let, uh, please. Uh, I'm going to get laid in front of you. Yes. Yes. I'm sure. Okay, I'll have two questions. My first question is um, Is this a trial basis type situation or is this permanent? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because I know so many people that, that has waste pro and they're suddenly so stuck to them. They don't um, dump their trash when they're supposed to, they leave trash all over the ground. So my question is, is this a permanent situation for us or is this to work as a problem? Uh, this is an agreement, so it's a four year agreement. It's four years. It's uh, one year, one year renewals. So that gives the opportunity for us to review the quality of the service. But as I mentioned earlier, um, we do have a way to hold them accountable, which is through financial it's going to be means. Bob, would you like to? Wait on that. Basically, uh, what happens when the public service diminishes? So this is Bob Wolf from uh, Waste Pro. He should be doing most of the time. So yeah, I remember. Yeah. So so basically, we have an agreement with the city. The agreement comes with parameters, service benchmarks that have to be met. If we don't meet the service benchmarks required by the city, it costs us financially. Not only financially, but an immediate financial burden. But when it comes time to decide, do we want to keep Waste Pro around here or, or not? Then if we don't do a good job, it's going to kick us out. But that's the bottom line. So the four-year agreement, the only reason that there is such a thing is because you could get a collectively better rate. I hear about uh, how some of the small haulers, uh, they pick up the stuff like can, and then, but if you examine what you're paying per month, Guess what? What you're going to be paying per month for this service is a lot cheaper. No, it's not. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. So what's your what's your rate? Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars a month. Say twenty dollars. Okay. So the waste is getting paid twelve seventy four. It is cheaper. Okay. So it's twenty dollars a month. Yeah. Twenty dollars a month. Okay. 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 Twenty dollars Thank you. 
Every everybody is paying something completely different. But it's because it's because it's have, it's and people it's are complaining, it's and people are complaining. So you do have some residents that are paying over ninety some dollars for GFL and getting more service. Yet yeah, you do have the option to um, change, but guess what? The library is not in their area. So again, you have to hunt and try to find these other vendors where the city can provide the service for you. I just want you all to understand. And then the library also has the opportunity to bid on that service as well. Yes, they They have the option to apply and bid on the service as well. And even offer an opportunity to be a subcontractor. They chose to do something different. I'm just more concerned about the choice you made for us It was a, it's not a choice. And sometimes we do have to make decisions for the city, but also at the same time, we provide it. We've done this for the past two and a half years, almost three How years. We had surveys, we had town halls, even before when we kicked it back, but in 2017, there has been this conversation about moving sanitation, moving to the city water sanitation. We're never going to make everybody happy. No. But again, this is uh, I think this is a better move than what we've been doing. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, my question is, uh, we're going to be automatically dropped from the other trash vendor, and how would that happen? I mean, we're going to be automatically dropped from them to get receive deals or what? So we we've been communicating with the different vendors. There are nine currently in the city of Southfield. Uh, we are coordinating the collection and the distribution of these new cars. So fortunately, uh, GFL, the largest provider in the city, has 27,000 cars out there. Uh, and they use the same vendor as we're going to be using to manage cars going forward with Waste Pro. So we're working with that vendor. In addition, uh, three of the other uh, subcontractors, three of the contractors in the area currently are in the new agreement as well as so we're coordinating with them to make this as smooth as possible. That will start around May 22nd. Uh, so when you, send, when you put your garbage can out that, for that day of service, it'll be serviced and then uh, they'll, they'll take it away and give you the new container. That's good. All of this is going to be the last time before you pick up that stuff. And, and that's understandable. So we're trying to make this as smooth as possible. This is, this is kind of a big deal. So we want to make sure that we're paying as much attention to those details. And to be honest, that's the detail that we're spending the most time on, is to make sure that that transition happens automatically. All right. That's what we as council are focusing on going for it to be a smooth transition. We cannot afford to have any hiccups at all. So we have to definitely have a meeting to make sure that this is seamless for you all and you all do not feel pretty much the best as you all change so in, in addition to that, though, there will be contact information. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to do a, a, a mailing to every household. That will have the information on there. If you do not, for whatever reason, receive your container, you'll be able to contact us, and we'll be able to remedy that for, fairly quickly. Uh, the lady right here, put her hand up. That's a quick question. So, City yes. of only has 40,000 homes? <laughs> there are 40,000 um, homes with roll carts. So, you have... Uh, for condos and other uh, more densely populated areas, in some cases you have what's called commercial service. That's when you have a big eight-yard container. Uh, but for any home that has a bull car like this right here, would be affected by this change. That's my question. So there's only 40,000 homes that require this bull car. So this waste was able to service every home in the city of South That's correct. So they are, service everybody. They're expanding their uh, fleet of vehicles. Oh, okay. so um, they're not there yet. I'm sorry. I'm they're sorry. not there yet, but they hope to be there by June 1st. You said they're expanding? They will be, they yes. They can do it right now. Uh -huh. yes. okay. So they have actually larger clients than us uh, in Gwinnett. Their largest client in the area is 47,000 customers. And don't they have subcontractors? Yes, they have some subcontractors as well. You want to speak to that, Bob? Yeah, I just wanted to let her know that, you know, We've got, uh, we've got somewhere around nine or ten brand new vehicles coming for this project. Be here in uh, mid-April, where it'll be in this area. And we had a job fair earlier this week. We hired seven or eight people, six for locally, sure. six for sure, just to work on this project. People who live here, you know, 
we, we're based right here on on uh, Fulton Industrial. So I mean, expandability is not the problem. You know, we have the capital; it's being built and made right now. You know, we serve close to 50,000 homes over in Gwinnett. In the southeast, in 10 states in the southeast, we serve over 2 million residential customers. I and mean, this is what we do. We do large-scale residential collection, and we do not mind being held to a standard of excellence. We've got a third-party tracking system, a web-based system that monitors everything we do. Every time you raise a hand and say, I got an issue, it goes into the system, and the city knows about it. And then they're like, what are you doing about it? How long is it going to take you to get it done? We don't mind being under that screen. We're here to serve, to provide great good service. If you're not happy, four years down the road, tell your councilwoman, she can get it back.
uh, a test run on the equipment before they issue the bills. So once that happens, uh, that will be provided. We'll make sure that everybody is aware of that. We'll put that out on our social media to make sure that everybody is aware of that issue. The lady in the black and yellow. Um, question. Um, what is the year over year percentage increase? So the question is, what will be the increase each year? Okay, that's a good question. So the answer is, what we've done in that 1943, we've also included what's called a CPI, a, a Consumer Price Index, which basically measures inflation relative to solid waste service. So some of the key items on that are going to be obviously fuel and the cost of employees and equipment. Those are the critical costs and, and actually uh, taking the materials to the landfill. Uh, we've calculated two years of inflation into that $19.43. So if for some reason within that first year, Waste Pro has to increase their amount to us, that will already be included in what you're currently paying. So there should be no change in the price to you, the consumer, for at least two years. And after the two years? Then after the two years, we'll have to see where we are with it. Um, when we set this, this last pricing was when gas was a much higher price. So we're hopeful at this point that we won't have to raise prices at that point, but we'll have to figure out where we are at that point. And uh, if, if the agreement requires both parties to agree to whatever that pricing is. So there's always an opportunity for us to work through that process. But at the end of the day, our goal is always to provide the most cost conscious service to the highest quality available. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you said that it's basically designed to correct mm -hmm. a four year contract that looked at and enrolled at the one year period. Yes, four years with one year removed, yes. So my question is what if something happens where you just can offer in the public and you feel it's necessary to break the contract? Mm -hmm. Is that effective to the city for that? So the question is if, if for, some, for one reason or another, we decided to go in a different direction within that, that time period that we're talking about, is there a penalty? So again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is a four year agreement, one year with three one year renewals. So we have the opportunity to leave the agreement at any, at any one of those time periods without a penalty, without a penalty, and if that would be something if we're not happy with the service or if the pricing uh, change has been too great for us, we have the ability to go back on the market and find another vendor. And the second question is, mm -hmm. uh, you said that uh, the uh, transmission with curtains, walking the back of the curtains, is he the effect of these taxes now, the way he does, So 
Uh, what you're referring to is the relationship that all tax commissioners have that is established by the General Assembly. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of how, yes, but again, how the tax commissioner in Hudson County operates is determined by the General Assembly as it, as it, is, as it is for every other tax commissioner in every other county in the state of Georgia. Uh, I would say this as well. Uh, again, we've looked at other means of doing this service. It is not a very fun thing to do. We've looked at doing it internally, and I can be very honest, and uh, Gigi will attest to this as well. We do not have any interest in doing it ourselves. Uh, it is a very time-consuming process. Uh, the tax commissioner happens to be the most efficient and effective way to do it. Um, Mr. Gordon. Yes, ma'am. And Council Member Gordon's, um, uh, I, you know, would like to add that the tax commissioner is an elected official. That is so correct. if people are unpleased with his performance, they have the right to vote him out. And he runs every four years unopposed. Can we please get to trash? They have questions. Yeah, I just said that tax commissioner. That is no like trash to that. Please. We can't no, please. they have questions. I want to make sure that everybody's questions are answered, but we, we need to make sure that we're only having one conversation at a time. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a new homeowner, and I... Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Um, currently, I don't have pressures. Okay. Um, because we did a lot of, like, fees and stuff, and we purchased a few months of service. Um, okay. So, is there a way that I'll be able to start my service with you guys earlier, or, like, what do I do until now? All right. So, let me paraphrase your question and, and not if you agree. So, you're a new homeowner and you're looking for garbage service currently between now and June 1st. What are your options? Okay, so uh, GFL, and, and here's the thing, most of the vendors actually that are in the city of South Fulton uh, charge quarterly right now, so normally you're gonna pay three months in advance for service. So uh, in this time frame now, that would be the case. Uh, there are three vendors in the city that are currently adding customers, depending on where you live. Uh, that one would be GFL, one would be uh, Fulton Sanitation, one would be TNR. Okay, uh, this service with Waste Pro does not start until June first, uh, and once that happens, uh, you'll, you'll get a container and all that stuff. Uh, if you have an issue, if there may be a delivery fee. I'm not sure if that would apply to you or not. Um, if you want to speak to Gigi, we can get your information and we can find out to get that um, service that you should have service. I'm going to work from Amazon especially. All right. I'm sorry, yes, sir. The one you mentioned, Coach on social media, happy to have you there. And I check y'all on Instagram all that stuff. No social media, we can have you talking to Okay. So, uh, okay, so the gentleman said he wants his communications to be a mail. Yeah. All right, I got you, though. So, what we're doing, again, people communicate differently. Uh, some people are comfortable with computers. Some people are comfortable with phones. Some people want something in the mail. So, our process does all three of those things. But also, that's why we're here this evening as well. We're, we're giving you communications in person as well. Because again, at the end of the day, we want to make sure as many of you understand what the process is so that this process goes as smooth as possible. But also, if you have a concern or a, a challenge with the service, that you know how to get in touch with us so that we can fix it. In other words, a postcard will be included. But yes, sir. I see I mentioned is an extra, so that's not included in what? Right, so the challenge is, again, we were looking at it, and all of you live in the city of South Fulton, I'm assuming, uh, and we have a very diverse housing stock in the city of South Fulton. So some people live in condos, some people live on 12 to 15 acre palatial estates, and everything in between. So what we wanted to do was make sure that any service that we consider our core service applied to the largest group possible, okay? So if you live in a condo, most likely, there's a service there that maintains your grass and stuff, so you don't need that container. But also, if you live on that 12-acre estate, 
you most likely have a compost pile or some place in the back where you typically put your leaves and, and other debris. So that service will be something that you can utilize in the existing container that you have. You can, so you'll be able to put leaves and things in here as well. You also have the ability, if you so desire, to, and I believe that's one of the options, correct, to do yard trimmings. So you'll be able to contract with Waste Pro for that service if you'd like, or you can ask for a second container, and you can use that container for the same purpose. So, so um, and that's just my question. So, so I can put my, yeah, I can put my, I can put my, I got, I got, I got two loads of bags, I can put them out with my red stuff. You can, as long as they go in this container right now. Well, I don't want to put my container because that's a prayer, but you know, I, 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 moved, I moved from, from City Land two years ago. Okay. And they're wrong, right? You, you put it out, they take it up. Yep. With, 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 But then that then goes back to my question before, like you know, Mitch mentioned and also gets out, you know, they're mentioning that she's been here in you know, the city for years and years and had and 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 doing anything. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I mean it could be, you know, but I'm saying we've talked about this for almost three years. It's been on social media, it's been in emails, it's been in counseling. I, 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 so I, I mean I, people sometimes people are just not plugged in. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, I'm just saying what? sometimes we just don't know. So that's what we shared with them, 
and then WastePro and others, based on that information, came back to us and made a proposal, and in a second package, they gave us their pricing. So we evaluated their proposal first, and then we looked at how much it would cost. And based on those things, that's how we came up with our vendor. We ended up getting, so at our pre-proposal meeting, we had about 10 vendors there. We ended up receiving uh, three proposals. Again, this is a fairly large city, so not everybody is comfortable with serving 40,000 people. And the other question is, uh, for the parents, I know the city is south, south of the county. How do our price, how does our price fare with uh, college for each one in the city? And uh, what is it, uh, Alfred, you know, I just want to know. So I, I will I'll, I'll say one thing, okay, number one, um, the price that we have is very competitive, okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so the price that we have is very competitive, okay, so the folks that we do business with, they do business in other communities, and those prices range from $25 a month to probably $50 a month for the same type of service. I can't tell you exactly what they pay in College Park, uh, but I do know what all the vendors price, prices were in the city of South Fulton when we began the process. Uh, and this number is better than those prices that we were receiving before. And the benefit of that is because we're going uh, as a group, okay? So there's an area that we service right now in the city of South Fulton uh, that lost their service because they were served by the city of Atlanta. Uh, if they were gone to the open market, that price would have been $26 a month for that service. We were able to get it to $19 a month because we came as a group uh, and, and, and consolidated the bid um, and gave them a better price. So that's pretty much where it is. Yeah. 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 I'll ask Bob, by chance, or is it Mike?
for us to get these questions to find out when is the next step and when are the next meetings. I like the line, we'll tell them whatever y'all want to tell them. But just please let's move forward. Bob, you want to add something? It's not about the line.
Freedom Line Music. All right? And you can leave a voicemail too, and she'll call you back. Um, you, sir, I didn't talk to you yet. Go ahead. Yes, so the question is does everything need to be inside of this container? Yes, it has to go inside of this container. Yeah, someone puts a box on the side. Yeah. So that's the boxes, many boxes outside the container. I mean, I would suggest that each person breaks down the box, shove it inside the container. That's correct. So the question is, what do you do with the things that go? If you can't fit them in here for whatever reason, that's part of our education process. So that series three meeting that we're talking about doing uh, in April. That's what that's all about, how to use the service, what happens if I've got additional material, because sometimes we have celebrations and things like that, what happens then. Uh, but also, if you have a continuing issue with material not fitting in your container, we want to make sure that you know how to get an additional container. Okay? Um, yes. Go ahead. I can't hear you now. Sit down. $10.17 right now, I don't know. I mean, at some point, it'll probably go up, but again, what, 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 So, if you have squatters, if you have trash, yeah, you, you can come talk to your councilwoman. She, I'm sure, would be very happy to help you. So, but again, that, that that number I gave as well, you can you can make those requests there as well. So you got illegal, right? So okay, okay, yes. So I mean. Um, how many people have seen a dead animal on the side of the road this year? This is, the, this is the worst year I've ever seen. If you call that number, that's how we go out and pick that up. Okay? Uh, illegal dumping, somebody, especially around the, the base of the cell phone towers, if you see that kind of stuff, you call us, we'll come pick it up. But also we have a product called C-Click Fix, which allows you to take a picture of it. It gives us the geocoded coordinates so we know exactly where to find it. And then we go in and process that stuff. That's one of the things that Gigi does every day. She goes through every morning and makes assignments to those things so that we get them done. Okay? Uh, yes, sir. Question. Yes. yes. So you said if the container gets damaged? Yes, it will. Okay, so the question is if this container gets damaged, uh, what do you do? Okay, so the process that we're setting up is that we're basically funneling all the inquiries into one place, okay? So, again, if you're technologically astute, you can use the QR code that will be on top of your container, and you'll be able to put that request in on that page, okay? If you want to call somebody, you can call us. We're just going to put it in this, we'll put it in the same system, okay? Uh, but we're but, but it's more customer friendly, I guess, or somebody will talk to you, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, we know people all communicate differently, so this is an opportunity for people to communicate with us in a way that they feel comfortable, okay? So the question is, is there a cost to replace it? The answer is no. Okay. Yeah, let's just try to blow it up on July 4th. Uh, this gentleman over here, I haven't seen your hand up, so. Just for clarification, um, I mean, what does the monthly price of 1943 include? And included the um, twice a week, monthly morning, and later uh, on the city street side, so 
Yep, that's 400 miles, yes. Uh, my question is, who was doing that before? So the question is, who was doing the maintenance before? Collecting the dead animals. Collecting the dead animals. So we were doing that before, okay? But when we've increased um, our crews to do that kind of work, and we've increased the frequency. One of the things, again, I've been working in the city for three years, and we've gotten the same complaints. So this year we had the opportunity to basically reduce and have the times in between us picking up litter and, and picking up um, and cutting the grass. So that's, we took that opportunity because we think that's going to make a huge difference. Um, but also, um, we're, we're out there getting animals up faster than we've ever gotten them up to. Um, especially when it gets warm, that's a critical service um, in the neighborhoods now. We're getting ready to hit deer season here again. So, if you by chance hit dead animal, we see a whole lot of them in this area here because it's very wooded. Um, please call that phone number that I gave you earlier and just say dead animal and it will, it will route you to the right place and we'll, we'll come out and pick it up. So, which pro and the city together? So, that's done by another contractor, but all the stuff is integrated because at the end of the day, you just want the service. So we're trying to coordinate all those related ID options out there. Uh, street sweeping, uh, illegal dumping, uh, dead animal collection, all that stuff. Uh, at the end of the day, you just really want it gone. You want to take it care of. So we're giving you one number. That was something that came out of the process as well. Give you one number or one place to make that request, and then you'll have to fulfill it. Now, Waste Pro is a critical piece of that, but they're not all of that. That makes sense. Yes, in so, the back. Um, the weekend in April seems like it's going to have a lot of uh, valuable information. But if, like, uh, I work with a lot of, like, is it going to be recorded or will some of the answers be online after the yes. that So the question is the meeting in April, when we tell people how to use the service, will it be recorded? The answer is yes. Okay. Because, we, again, we understand that we're all busy people. I want to make sure that you have this information. Um, so Jackie in the back, so wave. Uh, she uh, is actually uh, streaming this right now. Uh, and that event in April, she'll do the same, and it'll be available on our website and I'm sure through social media Thank you. as well. Uh, the gentleman that was next to the lady I just talked to, yes. Okay, uh, I have a land that people have been dumping some tires on. Okay. So the question is, how do you deal with the illegal tires that are being dumped? So the question, it depends on where it is and how many there are. Uh, our group actually manages uh, illegal tire dumping sites. Actually, we got one right now on Butler Road that we're managing. Uh, so you can contact us, and we'll, we can do a determination of what the next steps are for you and what your options are. Well, you can't, yeah, you can't put them in the garbage. So, we're going to take a few more questions. I'll take our hand and then you can have them. All right. What do you want to do now? Yes. Okay, two quick questions. Okay. okay. So, I have a mental health organization of um, boards, and some of the communities are in danger. So that's, that's where your, your council person comes into play. 
Uh, I don't think we've decided exactly what's going to happen there yet, but we, we're, look, we're looking at the different options for what to do with it. But also, too, yes. just so you're all aware that each driver is going to have a phone. So if you are saying that you put your trash can out and that you missed, they didn't pick up your trash can and they came through in a route at a certain time, they are supposed to take a picture of everything and it will go up into I think you said a system where... Well, yeah, why don't you talk a little bit more yeah. about that. Every, every vehicle is equipped with GPS uh, system and what we call third eye uh, camera system. There are several cameras all the way around the truck and in the cab. We can, walk, we can see what the driver's doing all day, we can see everything around, and we know exactly where that truck is. So if we, if we receive a, a complaint from somebody says, hey, you guys missed my coverage, first thing we do is we go and pull up the system and we look at the yard as we drove by us. You know, we'll know right away. If there was a yard scan out there and the camera shows it, we messed up. That's on us. But if the yard is empty, we're still going to come back and take care of that garbage, but then we're going to tell Gordon, hey, you know, we took care of it, but please don't find us because it wasn't out. Okay. Right. So I don't know if we are HOA rules because some of them are, can't have them out to 94, that's what I'm out of 6 o'clock. I don't get up there early, so I miss my tracks all the time. So just try to see if I don't know. Yeah. The, the rule of thumb is usually, and I think it's going to be updated at dusk the previous night, but they have to be put away before dusk of the day. So, you have a question? Yes. The, um, you mentioned that the Ferdinand uh, microphone. Dr. Ferdinand. <laughs> yes, Dr. Ferdinand was going to be doing the business. Now, uh, typically when I get something from him, he's just going straight. I still have a mortgage in my house, so he's close to my. Uh, my mortgage holder and he is processed with escrow. I'm assuming that that's not going to be the case. It won't be a calculation of my escrow. It's just me to pick up a personal check. Well, okay, so the question is, you know, how would the, the, that invoice that is not on your tax bill be handled? So uh, it really depends on your escrow company. Uh, I know in some cases, uh, especially when you're, you're when houses are going to be transferred, so say you sell your house in August, that that company, that escrow company, will make a determination of you know how much you consume versus the person who will be consuming that will be buying their home. So you split the bill for that year. Uh, so in a lot of cases, the uh, escrow company will uh, take care of that for you. In my community, the escrow company takes care of it. So for me, at least, I'll talk about my house. So this will be a separate bill, but it'll still be considered part of my escrow. Like I mean, it can be. That's a question that you need to ask your escrow company. But normally, my, my escrow company calculates it into my uh, my fee structure, and they they take care of it. I can tell you what they do for me. Okay, so I won't have to stroke a check. Potentially, potentially, I'm not going to tell you not to write a check. I'm asking you to check with your escrow company. Okay, any other questions before we wrap up tonight? All right, this is 745. Um, so, there will be more public engagement meetings coming up in... I've got a couple, actually I got, uh, I'm going to uh, Councilman Sebastian's meeting in District 4 at uh, Fire Station 8 at 7.30 tomorrow night. Uh, and then uh, May 3rd, I'm in District 5, May 4th. I'm in District 1. So uh, please look at social media, or if you have questions, you can call us at that number, and you can find out what we will be able to do. All right, and if you are not receiving communication from either myself or Councilman Willis, please make sure you see Brandon you all in this oil Again, we have more of these meetings. Please stay tuned. I will make sure that I have you all engaged and you all know what's going on. Okay? I try to make sure y'all remember.